You are watching an online intensive of the Dance of the Eye and the Hand, Lesson 1 of Painting the Waters of Lake Superior. Welcome. This is the first of four sessions uh, on an online intensive on painting the waters of Lake Superior. And uh, for each lesson, there is a PDF handout that you can uh, download from the website. And uh, uh, I also, at the studio, will have uh, enlarged 1117 versions for each model if you wish to contact me and, uh, and come and pick those up. But we're going to look at painting the waters of Lake Superior, and I'm basing it on uh, my paintings called Four Superior Mornings. And in the packet, I'm including the reference photos I used and based these paintings on. And so part of the exercise of this intensive is to uh, start to train your eye as to how do you look at a photograph you may have and want to then convert it into a painting. And so you can use those examples as a, a way to look at the photograph, look at the painting it's based on, and just try and uh, project what things were eliminated, what things were added, uh, how do we not just copy nature but improve on it, as my teacher Hong John would say. Uh, in each packet, there will be a enlarged uh, version of the source photo of the final painting, and again, so that for your reference to be able to uh, see where uh, the differences are. Over the course of this intensive, we will look at um, painting undercurrents and just a little sparkle. We'll look at painting the hidden horizon line in lesson two. Lesson three, uh, the horizon glow, that little bit of white, and that's just the paper that uh, uh, you can get when uh, the clouds are right over Lake Superior. And then finally, a shimmering water. So those are the four uh, sort of uh, techniques or, or phases of the lake that we'll focus on. Um, and, uh, and again, in the packet, you will have both um, a large version of the source painting and a detail, and we'll be working from the details. We're not gonna pay attention in this session to painting the pine, but painting the lakes. So in this session, we're starting with um, painting the undercurrent and just a little bit of sparkle. And before we start, I want to um, uh, just review a little bit of process. This I call the Schmidt method. So for any hour that you're painting, I would suggest you spend about 15 minutes preparing your ink or preparing your color, the next 15 minutes in preparing the brush, the next 15 minutes into really studying the model, and then at the end of the hour for 15 minutes you get to actually paint. Um, so this is about slowing down, taking your time, working the process, and uh, and enjoying the, the experience, the journey, as much as trying to get to the end. So with that, let's uh, start our first lesson on painting undercurrents and a little bit of a sparkle. Let's start. So I'm going to start by putting a little bit of water in three different mixing dishes and uh, make a brush wet. I'm going to make a couple of different washes. I'm going to start with some indigo that I have in my palette here and mix up some pretty pale indigo and add some of that to another one. And to that one, I'm going to add just a little bit of um, the carmine which will give it just a little bit of a reddish tone. And then um, take 
just a little bit of ink and give myself a nice gray. So we're looking at this image of undercurrents and a little sparkle. I'm looking at the detailed image of it. And I can see uh, basically some lines coming across, it's almost diagonal. And I'm, I've got a little bit of that indigo with the carmine. Brush is not uh, quite wet, but a little bit dry. And I'm just gonna start putting in some of those lines going across. They're pretty pale and I will do it in a couple of batches, a couple of layers, um, not quite stripes, but working the brush both um, barely touching it, getting a dry stroke and touching it and getting a heavier stroke. So what we'll be doing here is building layers and layers. And I can also just start some that are going horizontal, that are really what's on the surface. And I can add some of that farther out in the page, but I wanna be aware of maintaining that area where I have the sparkle. So I wanna leave a pretty large white area. Then I'm gonna add a little bit of the blue I'm just reinforcing some of that direction, some of that diagonal. And here I'll make it a little bit bolder, cutting in a little bit more, but again, needing to uh, be aware of leading, leaving uh, enough of the white area that I can come in and work that later on in this project. So now I'm going to take a little more indigo to my indigo wash, a little more carmine to my carmine, and just make these a little bit more intense. And um, again, just to reinforce some of these, this is going to be just what will seem like uh, really an endless amount of layers, some more um, broadly. I'm beginning to work in the horizon line here. But it's kind of a weaving. We're just doing little areas at a time. And it's not quite a cross hatching, but we're making the movement of the undercurrent going sort of the, the waves coming to shore, going at this angle. And it's helpful. Um, I, I know this image well, so I'm not taking as much time staring at it, but it's helpful for you to look both, not only at the model for the painting, but also the photograph that on which it was based, so that you get a sense of, of uh, what is going on, what and, and looking not only at the top layer, but looking more deeply into what do I see as undercurrents? What do I see as under color? Because I'm making this right now is, is pretty much 
uh, a purple, but once that dries, I will go over it and over it and over it with variations on blue and gray to uh, mute it, and it'll have it'll 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 go deep. So now I'll switch back to some more of the indigo, and I'm using really the side of the brush, so I'm not getting um, broad coverage. I'm not, you know, really doing a full wash, but I'm trying to get some dryness, some scraping, and, and it'll be important, uh, and I will take a break shortly to let this fully dry so that where I'm putting this scraping activity will uh, hold its own. And I'm just beginning to sort of work in some of what will become that spark. Now I'm gonna use more of a, what I would call messy haired brush, just pulling my bristles out so I can get a little more texture in here. I'll start with some of the indigo, just barely touching it to the surface and bringing some of this across. And what it's doing is creating just little streaks or portions, some of it going over where I've already painted and it's dry enough that it'll hold some of that texture, bringing it in closer to where our sparkle will be. And this is setting up more of sort of horizontal pattern. And even using down to the butt of the brush to get um, just a little more intense color but very dry. And then I'll switch to some of the indigo with the carmine, a little more purpley, and I'll use that to, again, reinforce some of this diagonal waves. Just a little bit up here. So this is much like the experience of sitting on the shore and just studying the water. How is it moving? What am I seeing? And again, I'll let this dry for a little bit and then we'll uh, uh, continue. Now I'm gonna add a layer of gray. Get this brush pretty wet, but then dry it. Again, splay it and bring some of these lines in a little bit closer and adding a little more depth to the color here. And what I'm doing is really sort of framing in where the side of the model left side 
is fairly uh, closed, fairly uh, flat, if you will, in one color, and there's no white showing. So I'm just kind of finishing off these edges here. Bring this down a little bit farther. So now I've let this dry almost completely. It's just a little bit damp. I'm going to switch now to a Hake brush. It's H-A-K-E, as opposed to a hockey stick, which is uh, uh, used for different purposes. Uh, I'm going to get a little bit wet. And I'm going to do another layer now, but this time I'm going to mix my indigo with my gray. Put the hockey brush in that. And just take a little bit off. And I'm going to use this in two different ways. One is just broadly across the page to create sort of my main rhythms. And over here, I'll press a little harder as I go off the page to close off that edge. And again, starting here, going pretty pressure at, pretty much pressure at the beginning to kind of close off the beginning of that. But then I'm lifting as I come out here and I'm just beginning to create what will become the sparkle. And here I'm doing that lifting, but then pressing as I get to the end to close off the edge of that page. Just barely touching the edge here, just to get some streaks of uh, wash there. Here I come a little farther. This comes out quite some distance. And so generally, you're just doing, it, this is a lot of doing a little bit at a time. Now I'm going to let that rest for a little bit, let that dry so that it sets and it doesn't get messed up. In the meantime, I'm going to mix up some more of my indigo. So let, we'll let this rest and I'll be right back. So having mixed up some fresh indigo, I'm going to pour that into the indigo and carmine. And again, using the hockey brush, dipping that in. I'm not filling the brush. I'm just sort of dipping it in and I may just take a little bit off the edge. And now I want to reinforce these undercurrents. Now the scary thing of doing this kind of layering work is that things will look more pronounced than you might want them to be until they dry and uh, or they will look absolutely perfect and then dry back and disappear. So there's a, there's a process here in um, just staying with it. The beauty in all of this is this paper can handle all of this attention. Um, we're not using that much water at a time, not even that much pigment at a time. I'm now going to go straight into my indigo. And again, I'm just wanting to establish these as sort of movements that then I will obscure as I continue. And again, I'm just slowly working towards that sparkle, just taking a little bit out at a time. And 
then applying pressure towards the end to really close off the ends of the paper. Now I'm going to take this indigo and water it down. So we're using sort of layer by layer, just a little variety, little different shades of pretty much just indigo, carmine, and the ink. Now this is pretty wet and I'm going to use it to really solidify the sheet, taking out down here almost all of the white and moving it. The direction of the strokes are moving horizontal to create the surface of the water. I'm getting close now to where I have my sparkle, so I don't want to get too close, but bring some of it in. And here establish that horizon just a little bit more. But then pressing as I go off to take out the majority of the white that is there. And I can just bring a little bit of this across to again just start establishing some of that sparkle. Now this will let dry totally and then come back. So now this is again probably just three quarters dry. It's still a little bit damp but I don't think it's uh, the wash is still moving. So I'm going to add a little more water a couple of these and I'm going to continue to mix some more of that indigo and part of what I'm doing is is uh, changing the density of the pigment in each of these washes so I may go from having it more intense to less intense I'm just picking up a titch of black here because I really want to bring down the uh, color so that it's not quite so shiny and a little bit dull. And this is going to take it a couple of steps deeper. I have my hockey brush again. I'm messing up the hairs. I'm just barely touching. Here, let me get a test sheet so you can see what this looks like. It's a uh, bluish, but a little more heavier in the gray. And again, I'm going to start on off the page and just come in and pull and give some linearity to the distant water here. Again, more weight at the end and lifting as I come over. And again, by the time we're done with this, most of this will be under color. A little bit of water, a little bit of that tone. Bring some of it just across, close off the top. A little bit more. So I'm adding more depth Closing the edges off a little bit more. Uh, the general movement here is vertical, no, horizontal, sorry, the other vertical. Lingering a little bit to uh, thicken it up. Now I'm just going to switch directions and then reinforce this undercurrent and just pull that off the page and then I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the grade indigo and finish off this corner just pulling horizontally
And now it's pretty dry, so it's really just kind of scraping across. Okay, that looks good. Again, we'll let this rest, let it dry, and then we'll do the next layer. Wow, we look how far that dried back. So let's continue. I'm going to still work with uh, my hockey brush and uh, I'm going to check my washes here. So I think I'm going to start this round with going back to some of this with the carmine on it. Let me dry it off a bit. And a little more pigment in that. This mixes up so good. Just gonna again using the side of the brush and I, it's, it's fairly dry just add a little more of this diagonal movement and just Barely touching, just trying to get some scraping movement in. Then when I cover over that, we'll give some depth to those undercurrents. And come a little higher over here. Just a titch of it. Moving this way, just to add a little depth. It's just sort of adding some texture that'll then blend away as I add more over layers to it. And then I'll go back to, see what we have here. Let's put a little more indigo in this wash. Just have a fair amount of ink in it. And I think I need just a little bit more indigo. up some of that and add it to my wash. And I'm going to stay with this, with what's basically my landscape brush, and start adding a little more fuller color to it. Run a bit on the horizon line there, and I'm going to splay this a little bit more. So, part of this is you start out kind of hesitant, perhaps even careful. But then you get braver as you go. And here I'm gonna add a little more definition to that sparkle. I'm also adding more water to my brush. So as I go, I can add more, more wash. So I have that edge, but I also have the sort of flooding of some areas 
with the really wet wash. And as we should know from experience that this all dries much, much lighter. And so when part of your bravery in doing this is to do it more solid than you might want it to be with the hope and perhaps trust that it will dry back pretty significantly. Again, I'm closing off the ends so I can get um, a sense of solidity going off the page. Some of this is pretty dry, so I'm using almost the butt of the brush. And here I can start putting in some of that sort of irregularity of the sparkle. And I'll do this in several tones, several layers, so that um, I get that variety of tone. And then I'm gonna really shift here for a moment and try and pick up this diagonal undercurrent and just nail that a little more solid. Pull it off. And again, with the dryness support that general trend or that general movement. And again, I know this composition, so I can work fairly quickly. I would advise to you to uh, work slower and also just spend some time going back and looking at the model, looking at the photo that this was based on, just to get a uh, refreshed sense of what it is your painting. And so now I'm pretty much working the whole sheet, trying to get a full layer on, leaving some areas a little white or a little uh, dry, but pretty much covering the whole thing. So I have a, still my opening here, a little bit going off, some of it moving here. And again, we'll um, let this dry for just uh, maybe 10 minutes and then come back again.
So this is still a little bit damp, but uh, it's dry enough to continue. I'm gonna refresh my indigo here and pick up just a little bit of it of the pigment. And this time I want it to be a little bit brighter. So I've gotten several layers of just uh, indigo, indigo with some gray in it, indigo with some uh, ink in it. And now I'm gonna do pretty much straight indigo. And again, I'm just coming across and sort of setting that horizon line. And this time I'm being a little more selective, not just covering everything, but leaving some spaces out that will create some sense of movement or water. And again, this is the challenge with this is that we're doing many, many layers. And again, beginning to shape sort of the shimmer moving. Using this pure indigo to kind of brighten up the water a bit. And again, working both directions where this undercurrent is going, going at the diagonal to strengthen that movement, but then also just going straight horizontal to uh, sort of depict the water that's really on the surface. And I can close this up a little bit more. Bouncing the side, I get these nice little dots that add to the effect of the sparkle. And again, one has to marvel at the beauty of uh, this paper that can take all of these layers upon layers upon layers. I'll go back up here again. And we're just we're doing wet on wet, but it's dried enough that I can uh, know that what I have under is going to hold. And it's just dabs. Again, the 
this is just adding a little brighter blue to kind of shroud all the underpainting we've done. Just adding a little bit of almost like dotting to break the, the edge of some of this. And this is pretty light, so it'll dry back, but it'll take the shine off the paper. Okay, once again, we'll let this dry for probably 20 minutes and then we'll pick it up again. So now this time I've let this dry maybe three quarters. It's not totally uh, uh, dry, but enough that what's here is set, but also still wet enough that I can uh, add another layer and it will blend. I'm gonna go into my indigo here using the smaller brush and again, just, there's just so many layers uh, in doing this. This I'm trying to reestablish, or establish a little more firmly the horizon line. So just a light touch, but then also adding more sort of water, uh, water lines, uh, currents. Uh, just slowly we're adding layer by layer by layer, firming and solidifying the surface. And as you do that, you're getting a transition from the white of the paper to middle tones, middle tones, middle tones, darker and darker. Uh, so it's a slow, slow build. But as we're doing this, we can start seeing the uh, movement of the, uh, the sparkle. So I think of this often as a sort of a weaving um, where you have uh, some movement going in one direction, but then a subtler movement going the other direction that gives you some sense of, of movement. And again, the, the color I'm using here is really um, quite uh, light. Uh, so when it dries, it'll be uh, almost not perceivable, but we're gonna add just a number of layers at this level that just add more uh, richness. And we're just refining the transition between sort of the depth and almost flatness of some of this water to then the movement with uh, the light reflected off of it. And again, spending some time at the edge, solidifying that. But also just sort of beginning to work across the uh, shimmer or sparkle. And with what I have on my brush now, I know it's fairly dry, so I can drag it with a little bit of force, but I'm getting this very broken uh, line with it. So I'm creating that transition from the solidness of the water to the paper peeking through. And I 
again, I would spend some time pausing all this and just looking at the model that much more closely, looking at the source photo that much closely, more closely, just so you have a sense of what is um, the structure, what is under color, what is really just on the surface. Uh, even if you're, you know, if you're by a lake, go out and take a good look at what, uh, how does the light move over it? How does it shift? Just getting a sense of how uh, light works off of the water. Here again, I'm closing up some of these edges just to solidify it. The more that this gets closed, the more open that uh, sparkle in the middle will appear. And I'm working pretty much the whole sheet. So I'm, as I work down, I can return back up here and just continue to add another layer. In some cases I'm reinforcing what's under it, in some cases I'm extending the color, building the layers. Also knowing in terms of pressure, sometimes I can be just very light, barely touching the surface. Uh, other times I can do much more pressing. And when I do that pressing, I'm not only getting more liquid on the page, but I'm also getting more color. So the more I press, the stronger the color is going to be. You're just reinforcing some of that diagonal with fairly dry indigo. And I think I'm pretty close to a point where I just need to let this all dry solidly so I can see what, what do I have here and where do I need to make some more corrections? We're, we're getting pretty close to being, to being done with this. And it's helpful to stop periodically because you get to a point where the whole thing is wet and you really aren't uh, as clear as you'd like to be about where this is going to dry. Just adding a little bit of texture to the edges here, to the transition, so I get a little more sparkle in it, reinforcing some of these horizontal lines, but really doing it in almost dots or scraping. Okay, that's enough for the moment. We'll let this dry totally and then we'll pick it up again. So I've let this dry actually overnight. So we're starting the totally dry sheet. Um, it's not too bad so far. I'm gonna start with my hockey brush, get it a little bit wet wick off some of the excess. And I'm gonna, for this layer, start with some of the uh, carmine with, it just has a titch of uh, indigo in it. Take some of the excess moisture off. And I'm just gonna do some light streaking with that to get a little more under color. The 
this will disappear uh, probably when it dries, but also uh, then uh, get more subtle as I add more blue layers on top of that. But I'm just wanting to add a little more variation in color, adds a little bit of depth, and to reinforce the diagonals as well. <clears throat> Some of this is a little bit too solid for me, and um, I'm wanting to blur it into more complex shapes, more variation, so I'm not just seeing the singular strokes. That let's we'll let this dry a little bit, and then I'll come across the whole thing again in uh, horizontal lines. So we'll continue here. I need to mix up a little more indigo. And we're just gonna continue with another layer of Indigo. Not too, uh, not too much pigment in it. Let's see if we have it. We dry it. Just a little bit more. So we're going to basically continue the same process of just slowly adding a little bit more to that horizon line and then bringing some strokes. So we're just continuing this sort of horizontal stroking to further uh, refine the sparkle and also adding just a little more solidity to the deepest parts of the water here. So I really am adding a fair amount to the edges And then a little more openness and variety as I get to the middle here, so I get some uh, sense of uh, transition and, and movement. The movement becomes more important. Let me switch over to this side. And the trick at this point, one of the tricks, if you will, is that you want uh, we want to be adding more layers so that on one hand some of this just becomes more solid and you're wanting in some cases to make it look while it's wet much darker than you want it to be. And this gets to be uh, sort of a balance, balancing act in all of this is that um, I may make it look like I am covering up all of the subtlety and yet um, when it dries, what looks solid will then again disappear. Again, I'm trying to reinforce some of this diagonal movement and by adding layer upon layer upon layer over what had been primarily that red carmine, I am uh, obscuring sort of the edges of that. And so as I'm placing some of this, I'm looking at where, where can I see the edge of that deepest color and where can I then obscure it. And going back to the bottom here, really putting a fair amount of pigment down here. So just really 
saturating it, at least in the corner, a little lighter as I move, leaving some areas untouched. And then sort of cross hatching where I just put down those diagonals. And then once I have enough of this covered and just a little bit left in my brush, I'll add more broken strokes still in the indigo to further break up this sparkle and to add more transitional uh, dots and segments to make the sparkle look like it is actually moving. So there's no abrupt edge to it. So once more, we'll let this dry. We'll see what we have. We're getting awfully close to being done. So now this is still maybe three quarters damp. I'm going to switch back to the uh, Ake brush, but I'm going to mix up a little more indigo. And you may become more aware at this point that you can do this forever, for as many layers as you can possibly stand. The paper uh, holds up, and, uh, and at some point you just have to decide whether, whether it's done or not. So I'm going to put some of this indigo, and actually loading up a fair amount and loading it high into the brush, then drying it so I have both sort of dry and wet in the brush. We'll also splay the hairs a bit so I'm not getting too much of anything at a time. And again, just adding more texture across. And again, this is it's not fully watered, but it's a pretty wet brush, pretty thin in pigment. Go a little slower as I get down here because I want this to cover a little bit more. I want what we put down in the diagonal to really become an undercolor and sort of scraping this across so I'm getting almost some dry uh, uh, shading on this. And again, I think I'll just let this sit for a while and let it dry and just reinforcing some of the edges, making a little more broken transition, but still fairly dry. So I still have enough pure white in this sparkle here. Okay, let's let this dry and we'll see if we're done. So this is um, still a little bit damp, but um, I'm liking what I have here. And I'm going to shift my attention from uh, the shimmering and water and the undercurrents to doing the sky. And for that, I'm gonna turn the painting upside down and uh, and to focus on what's down here. I'm going to switch and use um, not the indigo but the uh, fallow cyanin, which oops, it's not even opened. This is, I don't use this color often, but I would use it in this case, I'm going to get my knife here, 
to because um, I like the, the 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 shade of blue that it uh, gives for sky. Let's open this up. There we go. I'm just going to take a little bit of this. I won't need much. And particularly for the sky, I do want, uh, while the water has a depth and a weight to it, the sky I want uh, pretty light. And I'm gonna put a little bit of water in this dish and pick up a little bit of that blue. And this is more of a, um, I'm not sure how to, how to say it. It's a, it's a brighter, brighter blue. Whoa. Well, that's a, a bit too much. Let's just add some water to that. And again, knowing that these colors always dry uh, farther back than you might expect, depending upon how much pigment you have. Let's test this out. Yeah, that'll be just right. So I uh, have a clean hockey brush, not too wet, just damp, pick up some of that color. I'm going to work it into the brush. And I'm going to start at what would be the top of the page and just go all the way across a little bit of water in it and continue all the way across and get a transition and just down to where it'll just bleed into that water line I'm going to do just a little bit more here so I get a little more of a transition, put a little more weight at the top. And now this is very damp. It should be moving nicely. Just to make it a little vari variations on it so it moves. And now we'll let that dry. And our uh, painting of undercurrents with a little bit of sparkle will be done. So having let this dry completely. We now have our complete piece, Waters of Lake Superior, showing some of the undercurrents and a little bit of sparkle. Next time we will do uh, Lake Superior with the horizon line hidden. Till then, bye-bye. Before you go, please note there's a PDF on the website for each lesson containing the models for each lesson and su supplementary material for each lesson. You have been watching Distance Learning from Laughing Water Studio.